Good evening, peace fanatics. Good evening, let's take your seats, please. Welcome to conference's most exciting event. You lucky people, you lucky people, and that includes you online as well. Very nice to have you all with us this evening. And uh, thank you for coming to this event, sponsored by the Institute for Individual and World Peace. Okay. And as we traditionally do in these moments together, we just come together, we just peace. Right? Is that, is that right? Is that, is that what we do? Peace? I don't know. Sounds good, doesn't it? Why not to have a gesture? Or well, what would be the gesture of peace? What would be the gesture of peace? Yes, yeah. yeah, peace? What, what, what is it for you? No? Is this, yes, thank you. Oh, very good. Well, come, come up here. Come up here and show everybody. There's a lovely lady in the audience here. Elsie, right? Yeah. Elsie Storm. So show, come, come up here so you can see. Yeah, well, whatever. This is Elsie. And so... I was, just, I was just pointing out, I said, what is your gesture for peace? And she was going like this. I said, come on. And so what did you do? What? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think we should have a gesture for peace, don't you think? Why not? Why not have a gesture for peace? Okay. So uh, part of our repertoire. Uh, Lynn, Lynn Cox is here. So come on up. Lynn Cox. And Lynn is part of the individual, one of our staff at Windermere. Yes, thank you. And um, this is all very spontaneous because I just spotted her in the audience. And um, Lynn has been working at Windermere for how long? 24 years since. 24 years. 1991. Very, very, very familiar with the horses and, um, and worked very, very hard with them. So perhaps you'd like to call us into the light, Lynn. It's a surprise. She's nervous. I don't even get a chance to be nervous. <laughs> Father, Mother, God, just now we ask for your divine presence, your love, and your light to surround us all, to protect us and fill us. We give thanks for being able to come here and join together in our love and sharing and service. And let's just take a minute to send the light to Windermere and all the beings there, all the animals and the furry friends and the trees and the ponds and the wind and the rocks. And we give thanks for all of you here and all of you online that are donating and supporting Windermere and IIWP and all of you peacemakers who are gathered here now. So be it. Anna. Anna. Thank you so much, Lynn, and thank you for all you've done through so many years of just holding the focus up there, along with other Windermere staff. Who do we have with us today? Who else is with you? Anybody else? George is here. Where's George? George, come on up here, George. George, George Pace. 
just see the staff at uh, Windermere, just, just, and all the people online, the, the thousands of people online, actually, from across the world. So just, this is George, say hello. Hi. <laughs> George is a man of few words, but say a few more words. Um, well, I appreciate all the assistance, the donations that make Windermere work for all these years, and uh, I'd like to see it continue, if that's going to be possible. And uh, just a lot of gratitude for all the support for making that place possible for all of us and all the people that come there. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, George. <laughs> so now, as you know, the Windermere and the Institute for Individual and World Peace are a big part of John Roger and John Morton's ministry. And it was very, very special. Windermere Ranch was very, very special to John Roger. And uh, let's just hear from John Roger right now with an excerpt. While we were downstairs talking to people that were with me in preparation to coming to speaking to you here, somebody said that they had an acronym for the word peace. And so they gave it, and I said, that's real good. I said, it won't be long until somebody will improve upon that one. And I had, wasn't out of my mouth 30 seconds till the person sitting there improved on it. And so they took the words P-E-A-C-E -E and made this statement, people enthusiastically applying Christ's excellence. That's what happened to me. See, that's... When you hear something that does it to you, it does it. Now, why wouldn't I just read the Bible and get that to do it to you? Because you're a living scripture. That's what it boils down to. Don't you just love that, just hearing from that man? I mean, when, um, for those of you who are online, when, when I first arrived here yesterday and came into the hallway, we have a big products area, and we have... Oh, goodness, it must be 20 blown-up pictures of John Roger, and each of them from different eras and everything. And as soon as you just see those pictures, the energy of conference hits you. And hopefully, from that excerpt, here we are at conference. I just love it. Um, IWP, Institute for Individual and World Peace, has four principles of peace. Four. You know, I mean, I'm sure you know many of them, but let's just go over them because they're going to be very important tonight. We're going to do an exercise around them. Um, we're going to see a slide of them, actually. I think we have a slide for them so we can just see them. Peace is present. Peace is an inner process. Peace is the cessation of againstness. Peace is a choice available regardless of any conditions. Okay, we'll have that slide up again in a moment. But So, these really meant not too much to me when I first saw them, but with each passing year, they get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I think if ever I'm going out of balance, I think we just always can go to number one, right? Peace is present. I mean, these are profound. These are given to us by John Roger. Um, let's have Kay Turback up here. And Kay is um, just one of our beautiful peacemakers and lives up at Santa Barbara and, and is our team captain. And she's going to talk about peacemaker meetings and Windermere tours. First of all, let's just take a deep breath and breathe in peace and just let whatever is not peaceful go away. And with this next breath, breathe in the Prince of Peace and let the Prince of Peace walk with you this evening and throughout conference. I'd like to invite you, especially if you've never been to Windermere Ranch, a place of peace, to join us for tours on Monday, July 6th and on Tuesday, July 7th. We have spaces in the van, and if you're interested, you can also drive to the ranch. Please see Janeth, who's in the back row. Janeth is waving her hand. 
or you can email at peace, peace at iwip.org. Another chance to experience the place of peace is to attend our peacemaker meeting on Sunday, July the 12th. And that's a chance not only to explore and study the processes of peace, but to walk the land, greet the peacemaker that you already are, see the animals, and we'll give you a tour and have light refreshments. God bless you all for coming tonight. I turned off my microphone because I didn't want to be making gurgling noises while Kay was talking. Um, we have, I said thousands of people online. Uh, we actually have 98 people online. <laughs> Just over 100 actually, but what, a, what an international group they are. Um, United States of course, Brazil, hello Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, Colombia, Spain, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, France, Nigeria, and Uruguay. So that's quite a selection, so thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and, and being part of this ministry that is so important at this time in the world. I mean, but when hasn't peace been important at any time in any world, right? This seems to be part of what we do. So, um, and, and why go to Windermere? And not only is Windermere a place of peace, but it's also a place of healing. So let's hear from John Roger. The most amazing thing that has been happening with this project we call Windermere is that the land now is starting to give up its secrets. And they're, they're finding rocks up there that when people lay on them, they get rejuvenated. And I don't mean this woo-woo metaphysical stuff. And we've walked the land, we've traced the land, and cut trails into places. And what we knew we had that was beautiful, when we started taking away at the top of it, we found out that underneath it was gorgeous. And we have found some real metaphysical stuff there that's going to be very difficult for anybody to prove. There's a great big gigantic crystal down underneath there that makes this site very sacred for the Chumash Indians, and Indians before that. And I don't know if those Indians were from this planet or not. So, a mystical wonderland. Um, we had a couple of announcements. Um, Kay mentioned Janeth, cause, so Janeth, can you come up here, please? And I'd also like Beth to bring up the um, the Windermere silent auction piece. So, I want to get some more characters in because there's just a lot of people that are part of the Institute. And uh, Janeth is fielding your questions and you may wonder what Janeth looks like. So here is the very beautiful Janeth. So here she is. Hi everyone. I hope you're having a good day. Good evening. Thank you for coming. And you're the point person. I am. I am the point of contact. I know David did a great job when she was here, present, handling this part of her job back then, which is so beautiful. <laughs> God bless you. And so I want to thank for every single rep out there. You guys are doing such a great job. I want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeanette. So there you go. So she has such a beautiful presence. Hopefully, you're not shy about contacting her now. And this is Beth, Beth Hinman, who now has moved to San Antonio, <laughs> Texas. And this is one of the items we have for silent auction. And this is available online as well if you want to bid. We have four items, I believe and they'd be beautiful handmade pieces by one of our MSI ministers and initiates, Jeff Bunting. And just, I'm trying to get it away here, thank you. 
So here it is, this beautiful hue piece and um, handmade stainless glass, stainless window, stainless, I was going to stainless glass. <laughs> stained glass, stained, stain, stained glass, thank you very much indeed. I, I, I need to rehearse more before getting up here. So this uh, stained glass and uh, it's quite beautiful. There's four pieces. The minimum bid is $200 and everything you give will, of course, just really assist the work of the Institute for Individual and World Peace. This is a beautiful piece. We have four others and it's also available for auction online as well. I do believe you have a, a button to press for those of you who are on the page. So thank you very much. Thank you, Beth. Lovely. Um, many of you get on a regular basis these um, emails uh, with, with the peace prayer on it. And this goes around the world. I don't know how many thousands of people are involved in this peace prayer, but we're going to hear from Joan Shea, who has been holding the focus for this. She's going to come on Skype and just talk to us just for a couple of minutes or so, but just so you know who Joan Shea is and these wonderful peace prayers that we get in, um, definitely in Spanish, in English, of course, and these messages go out to many people. So Joan, perhaps you can let us know how many people are getting these peace prayer messages now. And exactly, is it once a week or once a day or once a year? Please, let's hear from Joan Shea. Hi everyone, it's great to be with you in this way. Um, we do have several thousand people participating in the prayer. Um, as of tonight, uh, 3,679. Wow. So, <laughs> I know many of you in the room uh, as well have been participating. And, um, and, and I do want to share with you just a few things about the prayer itself. Um, I'm a little unused to doing this in a Skype way, so bear with me here. Um, this is our 11th year that we've been doing the prayer. Um, the, the prayer is an easy process that you can do daily to bring yourself to greater peace. Uh, and it's based on the nine magic words of John Roger, IWOP's founder. As you know, those words are, I love you, God bless you, peace, be still. Uh, Paul asked how often the emails come out. Well, during the round, uh, there's two emails a week. There's one on Sunday and there's one on Wednesdays. The Wednesday is the peace prayer uh, visualization and the one on Sunday is um, the uh, a, 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 a John Roger quote and process that uh, we ask for you to do. And then you send, a lot, of, a lot of the peacemakers send back sharings to us. So it's really wonderful to read the sharings um, and to <clears throat> see how people are uh, applying the teachings to their lives. Um, I would like to lead you briefly, uh, if we have time, uh, in the peace for visualization. Is that okay? Sure, it's just a couple of minutes, right? It's just... Right, just a couple of minutes. Okay. <laughs> Right, you know, these visualizations, they can be like 25 minutes, you know, so. <laughs> I, I knew you would want it short and sweet, so here we go. So I invite you to close your eyes. Father, Mother, God, just now we call ourselves forward into the peace that is present. We ask that you use and work through us for the highest good as we reach out with our hearts to bless and hold in our loving all our relations, the planet Earth, and all its inhabitants. Our friend John Roger tells us that peace begins with you as an individual. It starts with your breathing. So let's focus a few seconds here on our breathing. Just be aware of your breath flowing in and out of your body.
Gradually, this relaxes us into the present moment. For it's in the, in the here and now that our loving and peace resides. I invite you to put your hand on your heart and say the words of the prayer to yourself and all your conditions. One time, I love you. God bless you. Peace. Be still. As we give loving and peace to ourselves, our loving and peace grows and expands. We see before us our precious earth and around it a great company of peacemakers and light things. We join in to send our loving to all living beings and to all the conditions on and in the earth at this time, that, is, that are present at this time. And we chant the words of our prayer two times. I love you. God bless you. Peace. Be still. We envision a reawakening of peace on earth, like the golden sun rising over the rim of the planet, spreading forth its light and encompassing all in the light of peace. I love you, God bless you, peace, be still. Beirut Shpeshen. Beirush Bishan, thank you so much, John. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I know that when we first suggested that to Joan, she was, she was very hesitant about it, and what was I going to do? But as you can tell, it's magnificent. So thank you for leading us in peace and bringing us that beautiful quality. And Joan has also been um, responsible for our email classes for many, you know, in the early days of of the internet and the web. Uh, we just basically did email classes before we got so sophisticated and Joan was really at the cutting edge of that. And indeed, there still is a way to do email classes. So thank you for that contribution again, Joan. So let's just get some uh, practical steps here because uh, how do we get practical with these peace principles? When we talk about peace, it's like it's all very nice. Yes, we move into peace. How can we utilize them in our lives? You're gonna get into groups of four. And the way you're going to get into groups of four, that's why the configuration, is that if there's a white ribbon at the edge of your row, then what I want you to do is turn your chairs to face the people behind you. And that will go all the way along. So go ahead and do that. Should be pretty easy to turn around. Very good. If you need if you need help turning if you need help turning a chair around, just um, just raise your hand. And if you if you need a partner, just raise your hand as well. If you need an additional partner, raise your hand. If you don't have four in your group, okay. So if you're Spanish, anybody need a Spanish partner? Okay, so it seems like everybody's pretty happy. So you guys will just have an extra round. Let's have your attention, please. If you're Spanish and need Spanish speaking and need a Spanish handout, can you raise your hand? You should have a handout in front of you. If you need a Spanish speaking handout, raise your hand. We'll get it for you. So we're just going to see how this works. You're now in what I call quads or groups of four. 
And we'll be doing this actually at the uh, conference workshop. So this is a trial run. We haven't done this before in a workshop. So in groups of four. So have you settled down? Let's, so the exercise hasn't begun yet, so let's have you be silent, please. So now you're in groups of four, or if you're in groups of three, that's okay. So the peace, we're gonna, uh, when we start the exercise, you'll see the four principles of peace. But they all should also be on your handout. Peace is present. Peace is an inner process. Peace is the cessation of againstness. Peace is a choice available regardless of any conditions. So, the question is, describe a challenging situation in your life. Which of the four principles can be applied to your situation? Apply it now. What is different or what feels different? So when we say apply it now, what we want you to do is talk out loud about the process you're on. If somebody is bothering you in your life, you can just say, well, peace is an inner process. That's the one you want to use. And then you can say, well, what's going on for me? The inner process I'm going through with peace right now is, and describe your process. So if you've chosen peace is present, then describe what's going on and what feels different. So you're going to be applying these principles to a situation in your life. You'll each have three minutes each. When the gong goes, one of you will begin. You'll start by ans answering the questions. You'll have three minutes. The gong will go again. You'll go around. After all four of you have completed, there'll be another three-minute gong where you can all just talk together. Okay? Three minutes each, and then three minutes at the end to talk together. So call yourself forward into the light. If you have a problem, can you just stand out the room, please? Just walk to the side of the room. If you have a problem, just walk. Okay, Richard, can you walk to the side of the room, please? Um, just handle that. I don't want anybody. We're going to start the exercise. So, please call yourself forward into the light. And the gong will go.
Okay, so let's bring that to a close. I'd just like to just take a, a quick poll here that did you find, um, this is a serious question, not just a rhetorical one, if you really found a, a new way to use those peace principles to apply to your life, can you raise your hand? Just as a, well good, so we have a fairly good, about 50% of the people here, excellent. So um, that's what we want, we want this work to be practical as well as just feel good. And um, so I'm glad you found a way. Let's get a, a moment of peace from John Rogers. So if you're facing away from the screen, find a way to turn around. We're going to go back into quads in a moment. So you can turn your chairs around if it's easy. Because we're going to be doing this during the workshop. So I'm interested in how this works out. The chairs are heavy or awkward. OK, just do it in a peaceful way. Just a moment of peace. Sit down and let's relax and see John Roger. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Left leg into the skirt. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, <laughs> I need to be strapped in here. Need that thing. Oh, boy. This is the model of your seatbelts. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hi, Mom. Hi there. Okay. Yippee. Don't forget to fasten your seatbelt. I know, where's that strap thing? People say, why horses at Windermere? A horse lets you come in and be with it. And it's validated you by letting you come in and be with it. You don't care what anybody says. That horse already said you're okay. And we found people who said, I got rid of phobias of fear, of claustrophobia, of, of heights, of horses. I got rid of a lot of things that some I don't even know yet. I just know that I am free inside. So, beautiful. So now let's just look at your handouts, and these are the ones, the adopter horse handouts. The Windermere Adopter Horse Program. If you need a Spanish version, just raise your hand, please. Those of you, if you need a Spanish version of the handout, keep your hand raised. We'll get you Spanish. You'll see uh, on the second sheet, a list of qualities, and that's what we're going to be working on, finding the quality that really fits the bill for you. And what's special about these qualities is that John Roger has confirmed, at least he confirmed when he was here physically with us, that he has charged the qualities of the Windermere horses and other animals, and the qualities will be activated in you as you participate in Adopt a Horse. And that's what I love about this program. If there's something that you're working on in your life and you feel that you could use more of it by adopting one of these qualities, and to do that, you just give $10 a month to participate in the program, that quality is activated, is charged, and is activated in you as you participate. And this is so special that I myself just, um, I actually, uh, are part of this program as well, and I actually choose four qualities every year. So you can have more than one. Um, I choose four that are really meaningful for me. I do feel they're charged. I focus on them each month when I write my check to IAWP. I really love this program, and I really feel that it's opened up places inside of me that, um, that wouldn't be open otherwise. So it's really helping 
and again, very, very practical. And what you're going to do is just choose one of these qualities and just given where you are in your life at this time, choose a quality or qualities from the list that would most assist you this coming year. So which ones would most assist you this coming year? That's the first part. Then take the quality you've chosen and place it inside of you. Try it on for size. It's almost like you don't have to commit to anything. You're just saying, okay, joy, what does that feel like inside of me? Or maybe I am, or clear intention, or agility, or balance, or enthusiasm. How does that feel? Is that what I need at this time? And as you place the light ahead of yourself for the highest good for this coming year, describe how that quality is going to assist you. So that's what you're going to do. And you're going to talk amongst yourselves. We're going to give a gong every two minutes. And the two minutes is just as an indicator of like how we're doing time-wise. So just talk about the qualities, what they feel like inside of you, how they're going to help you this coming year. Just enjoy yourself chatting with your partners about this. This isn't too formal, but the idea is for you to just get a sense of what this quality is for you or qualities. As I said, I choose four of them. Maybe you have 10, maybe just one. And take a look. So we'll start. Call yourself forward into your light. Just um, turn around again if you haven't already. Call yourself and your partners forward to the light, and we will play the gong every two minutes.
Okay. So just bring that to a close. And just close your eyes for a moment. And just be aware of those qualities inside of you. And just ask yourself this question. Are you willing to adopt that quality or qualities now and have it energized inside of you? You've had a chance to explore them, to try it on, and now are you willing to adopt that quality now and have it energized inside of you? And for those who have made the commitment, we now ask that the inner traveler inside you charge that quality. And the mystical traveler will anchor it inside you for the highest good. And this was the wording that JR gave me for this exercise. So again, for those of you who have made the commitment, we now ask that the inner traveler inside you charge that quality, and the mystical traveler will anchor it inside of you for the highest good. Beirush Beishan. So, in all that beautiful energy, if you then take your forms, and if you can just fill them in, we'll play some music for you, and put them in the envelope, and the assistants will come around. If you've made that commitment, then this is the time to fill in the forms. your forms, raise your hand and the assistants will come out and uh, pick up the envelopes. If you pass the envelopes to the center aisles, then the assistants can pick it up. Some of them are wandering around, but you can pass your envelopes along. 
And we'll just give you another couple of minutes with that. If you have an envelope to give, the assistants can see it. Once you've completed that, you can begin to turn your chairs towards the front. If your backs are towards the stage, start to begin to turn your chairs towards the front, please. Actually, that was very nicely done. I, I noticed that, uh, Dawn, you just swivel that chair around, right? Swivel it around, that's very good. We're just working out these chair techniques. Lynn, Lynn, you can just swivel it around. Yeah. Anybody need more time? Just raise your hand. Okay, just a couple of more minutes. One more minute there. So what was nice, uh, Dawn from Australia. Come, come up here, Dawn. Let's just have another. So we now have a, 148 people online. Actually, we have a, wow. over, over, yeah, 148 online. And um, do we see? We don't see Australia there. Do we? Oh, yes, we do. Australia and New Zealand. So say That's hello. That's amazing. To hello, everyone. God bless you. I love you. Peace be still. There you go. So thank you. So Dawn came out for conference all the way from Australia. And uh, some people in Los Angeles go, well, it's a bit too far for me to go out here. It's, it's 45 minutes on the freeway. It's just too, too far. I'm going to stay at home. So just different approaches, but it's really nice to have Dawn. So thank you. Um, so one thing that why I pointed out Dawn is that I noticed that she just swiveled her chair on the floor. So she didn't even have to lift it. She just turned it around. Why am I saying this? Because if you're taking the conference workshop, we're just working out an elegant way to change these chairs back and forth. So feel free just to swivel it around. Okay. Um, so um, John, John Morton came up and shared a very special thing that happened during this last exercise. So I'm hoping he's going to share it with you. Um, just thrilled to have John here, of course, sharing with us. Um, I think mentioned before that IAWP, the Institute for Individual and World Peace, is a very big part of his ministry. Um, him and John Roger just really were so together in this peace focus. Um, it's really quite beautiful. And just to see it continuing on and for you to support it in the way you do through your donations, we really can't thank you enough. So we're going to have John up here in a moment. But just to prepare the space for him, I want to play for you my absolute favorite Windermere video ever and one of my most favorite moments of pieces ever. So it's a beautiful way to set the tone for John to share with us. So when the video is over, please welcome John. And just a heartfelt thanks, John, for you being here and for sharing with us. So meanwhile, enjoy the video.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please. If there's a glass in the house, but I, I, I suppose on the ranch you can drink right out of the bottle. You know, so. um, anyway, that that's a. I, my, I think that's my favorite too. There's a there's several that are really beautiful, exquisite representations of what Windermere is all about as a place of peace and. Of course, it just brings back all these uh, golden memories as well with um, John Roger and how important uh, Windermere, I'm going to say it this way, is still to him. So what, what did happen back there was uh, <laughs> I got charged. Uh, and uh, you know, in a way, I tried to explain it to Paul like a conversation, but it, it wasn't a conversation. It was like, came across. Um, but it, it often does, so that the, the uh, thank you, the work that I do as a traveler, um, when I say something like that, it really opens up this big field. <laughs> so it's almost like, oh. The Alexandria Library, uh, <laughs> the work that the traveler does. But in any case, um, you know, the JR is still involved spiritually, uh, as, as Paul was explaining in those words that JR cleared uh, as a way to invoke the charging of those qualities as blessings, as spiritual blessings. and. Um, you know, that's something powerful. It's not like a casual thing that you just take off the shelf and sprinkle on whatever you're about to eat. But in any case, uh, it, it, it's done. So I just told Paul that I'll, I'll do the, the physical part. It's, it's, uh, I, I just wanted to let him know that it, because of the, how this would work best. You know, that, that, that just came across while I was back there and he was talking about John Roger, you know, like it has charged these qualities. Like, yeah, he's still, but he, he can use a, a traveler in the world. So here I am. There you go. Uh, so then we'll just, we'll just keep doing that. <laughs> so work it, work it, however that works for you. And then the other thing, uh, so Lee and I, I think you might have heard uh, that we were in Bulgaria, part of the Insight Four, but we also did some MSI work there. We did a spiritual warrior workshop, a living love workshop for the Insight Four people. Um, what, watching that go on so that the work that's going on there, and then on the way back, we we had the opportunity to layover in uh, Munich, so we did, and and um, and that was brought back some memories too, because there was a trip in 1991 that uh, with John Roger, and you know, so I wanted to go back to Munich and then Salzburg, where Mozart was born. So Lee and I went went there, and we stayed uh, on the street where Mozart's house still is, which is where. Uh, John Roger had stayed too, so we were like literally on the block where Mozart hung out. We went to where he had his coffees, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then to hear Avi Verum, um, you know, and then relate it to what we're doing at Windermere. It's fantastic. Okay. There, there are some things that um, got shown to me prior to coming up here tonight. So then I just pause to see if, if in some way that was for me to just look at there and then, or is it also to share with you? So I'm, I'm just gonna have a look here for a moment. Uh, 
well, I, you know, what I'm seeing is, uh, you know, what was established through the Institute for Individual and World Peace, and, and it kind of was simultaneous to Windermere. So around that time, there was a shift with the work. Uh, you probably remember the Integrity Awards and that foundation, and, and then um, it stopped around um, 87, somewhere in there. So around that time is when we, we acquired Windermere, and then it became uh, the new work that John Roger was helping bring to the world. We still have uh, basically what I would call the technology for individual and world peace that you guys were working with tonight with the four principles. <clears throat> and we took two or three years in a way to kind of study if we could have the keys to peace individually and in the world, what would those be? Uh, and to kind of bring them as clearly and uh, as focused as we could. And those four principles, if you live those principles, they would be peace on earth for every person and all of us together. If we would just understand what's, what's there. And, and after all these years, I haven't seen that they're not enough. They're more than enough. And of course, the way it would work is if any one of us were doing the cessation of againstness, I mean, just doing that alone, and, and doing it completely all day long. Can you imagine it? So, so then in your way, it would be no againstness whatsoever, no resistance, and nothing like a judgment. Um, not even in a way like a fear or a doubt, it would clear up so there was ease and relaxation with Ave Verum playing in the background <laughs> and pictures of those scenes at Windermere um, like that. And then of course it becomes contagious, it becomes something that we can convey, uh, that people feel that in our presence there's no againstness. Uh, of course, holding that up when, when somebody's disturbed or in their againstness is not necessarily the easiest practice. Uh, so then it does become a practice to learn how to carry it forth, um, that it's a process within us all the, all the time that's always available. Uh, so we can source peace within. It's a choice. So it's regardless of the conditions, including our own conditions. We can choose peace. Um, so there you go. If we practice this, uh, it's something that we put into motion. Um, so obviously, what we do is not a, a, what I would call an activist approach. We're not a political organization. We're um, not marching or protesting or these kinds of things. What we're really doing is something on the order of learning what peace is as a demonstration that can be shared. Um, and that, that's really the approach that I experienced that John Roger has been sharing with us all these years and th that we have as a kind of a legacy. Um, and the other part of it is that my experience is, and I know that um, you know, the presidency uh, as stewards of Windermere and, and also that it's, it comes under MSI like a department, if you will, um, but that they, they experience the charge of what we're doing here to hold, even if it's different in terms of how active Windermere is as a, um, a place, you know, what, we, what are we doing up there? And there's a whole lot being worked out. I'm sure uh, if you're interested in Windermere and you have been interested, then you know um, we're still working out you know, how to best 
utilize the property uh, for a place of peace. Um, so we do have the animals up there, uh, you know, but we don't have as much. And then we're also working out, you know, how do we manage all that? But at the core of that is the value of holding Windermere. So I, I don't see, uh, you know, that we're going to do away with it or something like that if anybody has that kind of concern. Uh, but I, I don't own the property. You know, it's owned by the church. Uh, but I, I'm just sharing in my relationship with uh, those who are in charge of Windermere uh, as the presidency that it's greatly valued um, still. So we're just kind of doing our best to figure out how to manage the property, and this becomes something that is a 10% process, and um, it, it's also things like expenses and staff, and, and then what do we really do with what the property is. Um, the, the vision that we had, and I, I'm not saying we don't have it anymore, uh, but we had an intention that we could utilize it uh, for group activities more, that we could actually do retreats and that type of thing. Uh, and those of you who know some of the history, you know we had a, a process with a conditional use permit that we applied for in Santa Barbara County. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was one of those demonstrations of try to keep your peace while you go through this. Um, You know, it was very uh, interesting because I think if looking back now with that perspective, you know, some 20 years later, I don't remember exactly when the decision was made and it was unanimous 5-0, we don't want you to do what you want to do on your property. I mean, so that was made clear to us. Um, and really at that point, you know, something shifted like, well, we're in a holding pattern of some kind and we're still there. But what I, what I see with that is we can outlast certain things. Um, you know, one of the things that happened, and I think it happened during a conference one year where there was a major fire near the property and then those who were the first responders, the emergency uh, firefighters and that type of thing, we invited them and hosted them to, to use Windermere as basically the main base station for, you know, preventing the fire from doing serious damage. And, uh, you know, that's just one of those things that people may not understand who we are, or like who we are out of whatever that might be. And though, but then when it comes time to show who we are, you know, I have a very good sense that we did a peaceful approach to, uh, what do you do when there's a fire in your neighborhood? And, uh, and I, I just look at it that we haven't really tested that goodwill. And maybe in some ways we're just waiting towards the people who were, I'll say it this way, against us, uh, somehow move away or pass away or <laughs> things like that. And then we're still here. Um, essentially being the peaceful beings that we are. Um, and that at some point, there may be an opportunity to change up what goes on there. Uh, you know, but at the moment, I'll just be plain speaking with you and uh, the presence, the, at least, yeah. I see them back there, but if uh, my understanding is, uh, I think we spend more on, on just maintaining and managing Windermere than the revenue that comes in from donations and that kind of thing. So uh, maybe I'll just check since I see Paul back there as he vents on. Okay, so if you're wondering, and, and then you have stewards that kind of would look at their responsibility as, well, how can we keep it up so that we're not, um, draining the treasury of the church in some way. But it's okay, you know, because you tithe, and because you are generous 
with MSIA, it affords us the opportunity to maintain Windermere um, for the purposes that we have it now. Uh, and there are, there are things about that property that are magical. So if you have not visited the property or it's been a while since you visited the property, I, I saw some information yesterday that there's some, some tours or opportunities to go up. So maybe it hasn't occurred to you. Usually when in this room for this event, I'm, I am preaching to the choir. So I, I figure you're, you're folks who love peace for sure, but you also love Windermere. And, and there's a part of me, you know, that it, of course it runs deep in my heart, um, just with my own memories and experiences of the place. But what it was to John Roger, I, you know, that's, that runs deep, you know, like I feel like I'm some cowboy, you know, or a California ranger, you know, when I'm going to do what we need to do to protect our interests there uh, and, and protect what John Roger had as his vision. So that may outlast us, and that, I think that's part of who we are as a church, that we are doing a fair amount of... Uh, what we take hold of and, and spend our resources on for the next generation. And then you can extend that out as far as any horizon can go. Like how many generations are we extending? I don't know. But I certainly see it that, uh, you know, we're, we're continuing what I... I now like to refer to as John Roger's legacy. Um, you know, that we're, we're having tours uh, like what we're doing in France as a, a John Roger legacy tour. That it's in the interest of continuing his teachings, continuing his works, that we did these trips. And do you remember what... Uh, the main focus of our trips, like our Pat Four trips, and when we would go to the Soviet Union or we went to South America or uh, Eastern Europe, anybody remember the theme? Peace. The study of individual and world peace. And if you remember the Soviet Union trip, we met with uh, Soviet peace committees in Kiev and one in Baku. <laughs> I'm laughing because they're still very memorable. Um, you know, just as part of our work, that we were there in peace. So I look at that, that that's what we're continuing to do. Um, and thank you for your support. I want to get that out. Um, and I want to be thankful, and I hope you realize... Um, that we have great stewards in the presidency of this church uh, that then extends to the Institute for Individual and World Peace and Windermere. Um, it doesn't mean that we always see things eye to eye. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dedication. I'm talking about resolve that lines up as much as we can, you know, with John Rogers' vision, and part of that vision is not something like we're stuck in 1986 and we can't do anything different because that's what was written in stone and we can forever not change it. That's not the John Roger I know. You know John Roger talked about peace as something dynamic, um, and so it is. Has anybody noticed that um, the challenge to peacefulness is more intense now than ever? <laughs> okay, then maybe you're sharing my experience. And I just look at that's kind of a reality of our world that in, 
in some way we could see how it's intensifying. And when you just have more souls coming onto the planet, that's a recipe for intensifying. And the last I heard, all indicators are we keep putting more souls on the planet. And that rubs up the vibration here uh, with all the ver various frequencies that are showing up. And let's just consider that, you know, we are the group that holds the peace of Christ. And that would be a peace that surpasses understanding. What would that mean? It would mean it's a peace that overcomes whatever the storm is, whatever the disturbance is. Uh, wow, it seems like <laughs> so far away, but you know, we were in uh, Israel last September with John Roger. Uh, I mean, that just seems like so long ago and some place inside of me right now. Uh, and some of us, uh, John Roger physically didn't go, uh, but some of us went up to the Sea of Galilee, which is Tiberias and uh, Capernaum and you know, where the uh, Mount of Beatitudes is in that area, and we visited that area. And then we went out on one of those boats uh, that are go on the Sea of Galilee. And we were in the area of Tiberias, and they were explaining that under a certain kind of weather condition, uh, because of the change in elevation, that the, the Sea of Galilee is actually below sea level. There's not too many places on the earth that have that, you know, just downstream when the River Jordan comes out of the Sea of Galilee, it goes south, you know, through uh, or near Jericho, and then it keeps going south, and it ends up in the Dead Sea. And that's where it ends up. And I, I think that's one of the reasons they call it the Dead Sea. <laughs> uh, it, it, and it's the um, lowest place on the earth right there. Well, it's still low up in the Sea of Galilee, and in certain conditions, you can get something very close to like a hurricane wind that comes um, from the, the city on the, um, the west coast, the Mediterranean coast, that's, uh, they have a Baha'i temple there. Haifa, thank you. So, so it comes, there's a valley, that, and it's also the valley of uh, Megiddo, which is also the Armageddon Valley. It's that same valley. So the, it's like the, the combination of the mountains, it's, it concentrates the wind. So then it becomes like a wind tunnel, and you can get uh, heavy seas, meaning heavy waves, that could turn over boats. It's, it's kind of like a very unusual condition, but they were explaining that in, in this area where we were, uh, this would happen. So then when you remember this story about Jesus um, saying, peace, be still, that they were talking about, that, that, that was not like, oh, come on, you know, is that some exaggerated story? It's like, no, you, you know, you can find boats, and they, had, they recently found one, I'd say in the last 15, 20 years, near Nafginasar, where we would do the retreats for the PAT trainings that we would go. They found a boat on the bottom that was from the time of Jesus. So then it's like, okay, there's one that sunk. And, and it wasn't like, oh, there was a big hole or, or some cannonball ripped up the side. It's like, well, why did this boat sink if its hull is fully intact? Who knows? But if, if you just take what we're talking about, that these storms could be the kind of things that would sink boats, and then what would it take to still the waters? A powerful consciousness. Some of you uh, did this exercise last night uh, in the workshop where we did the prayer of St. Patrick with J.R., like J.R. Lettuce. We, we played a tape. 
And so we stood up as a group, and I just invited everybody like to do that invocation with JR. Like JR says the words as much as possible. You repeat the words. And, and that he was doing it fast enough. You had to really keep up. And I think that was part of what charged that prayer for everybody who did it last night. One of my experiences with that is that when we kind of intensify how we invoke, how we induce, you could say love, uh, you could say caring, you could say strength, well, let's say peace. The more intensely you invoke it, the more intensely it is called forward. And let's consider that this power of the Christ can still the waters, could stop the storm. So then I, get, I just got that image uh, that we probably almost all, if not all of us, seen in Tiananmen Square in the tank and the guy in front of the tank. And I don't think he was doing something uh, <laughs> like a, a superhero or, or something like that. I think he was just being somebody who wanted to do something about peace. And he stood in front of a tank in such a way as that tank, whoever was driving that tank, moved and maybe disobeyed orders. And who knows what happened to the tank driver? I don't know. You know in that part of the world, we don't seem to always hear the news the way we do here. Don't have to be really concerned about that. It's more important just to consider that you have the power of peace to invoke it. Here's another story I've shared from time to time. Uh, somebody told me they were standing in the checkout line at a, a large grocery store, supermarket kind of store with you know, 15 counters and fairly busy. And there was a woman and her young son like in front of him waiting you know, to, for the cashier to check them out. And the son kept grabbing for the things at the checkout stand, you know, had like candy and chewing gum and little toys. And, you know, of course, that's why they put them up by the checkout stand, because <laughs> they know, mommy, mommy, buy this. Well, she, the mom got progressively more frustrated with her son and kept saying, no, you know. And then it started getting physical. And the, uh, the person who was observing this was really disturbed with the way the mother was being with her son, who was acting like how probably a lot of us would if we were four years old or however old he was. And at some point, uh, this man stepped back from the line into the middle of the aisle, right behind the, all the checkout stands, and at the top of his lungs, uh, yelled out, kindness! <laughs> well, it's like the whole store stopped. Like, Every checkout stand, everybody was looking at the man, including the mother and the son. But can you tell how that would stop the energy of the irritation? Can you, can you get it? Like, just maybe the loud voice, but the message was kindness to invoke that, induce that, and to do something radical. Um, and to consider we all have that ability, you know, to, to do a cessation of againstness. We might have to go out of our comfort zone. Uh, but as peacemakers, let's not consider that we're not called upon. Let's consider that we are called upon. 
and it may be uh, something, well, I'm not comfortable. Why would I be the one or why should I be the one to bring peace to this? It's not my son. I'm, I don't want to get involved. Uh, if not you, who? And that, that's one of the questions that peace asks. You know, are we willing to step into it? Um, and step up and, and put aside whatever it is that would be the resistance. So now I'm reminded of uh, you know, one of my favorite stories from Jesus. And, and that when he, that's when he came upon the woman who was about to be stoned. And it's a, an amazing story because it's one of those where I, I just sense there's so much more that's not in what's written that causes us to wonder. And I, and I often think that's what they had in mind, that we would start to wonder. <laughs> what else? And how, what did that mean? Or, and then what? A part of it was that uh, Jesus was making marks into the, the dirt, essentially, that he was drawing things, but then that wasn't really revealed. Like, what was he writing? Uh, and who knows, maybe it wasn't even writing, maybe it was symbols. Of, you get the idea. And then he interceded. Who amongst you is without sin? It's like kindness. <laughs> you know, that it froze people. Maybe in their culture, no one had ever asked that question. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. But he, maybe he was the first one to ask that question. Let you be the first one to cast the stone. If you're without sin, then then you have the authority. But in some way, there, there's a law there that, like, how can you discipline somebody if you could not pass the test that they're being judged for? If you, too, would be judged? Like, and how would that question do that? that how would that Christ convict somebody in a way that ends up with no againstness. And the story goes that they all walked away. There was not a stoning that day. And there was another part to it. Like, woman, who has judged you this day? Nobody. Like, yeah, and neither have I. And, and to me, in that part of it is, I could. Like, I have the consciousness that if I wanted to judge you, I, I could judge you. So then the responsibility would be, as the words stated, and sin no more. When I look at that, I go, you know, I don't know how to do that because the same guy in another part of the story is saying, look, if you've thought it in your mind, it's as if you did it. And you know, my mind, it knows how to sin. And go, well, do you ever have emotions that go into against us? I do. They come visit. And what do you do about that? That's an excellent question. I find my commitment to peace. And often, you know, where it comes to is the, the inner struggle. It comes into the inner process of it's not so easy to be peaceful when the emotions are raging or at war. My experience is these situations that take place outwardly where we lose it or we come into the reaction that it's not the outer thing that's causing it. It's, it's that we are carrying the against us. We're walking around like a bomb who's, who's loaded. 
And it's just looking for something that will trigger what ignites it. So don't be surprised. So then the responsibility would be to discharge your bombs. I don't have them, uh, you know, my mind's going, what is that, you know, where it's like the firing pins ready? Well, it's, it's like primed, like it's, you know, whatever that word is, like, you know, if we were using the gun metaphor, it would be cocked. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's set to fire. You know, so, um, <laughs> I don't know if you heard this. I, I had heard this the first time the other day that uh, somewhere like in 1948 they were doing some test flight and um, the, they, they put a live uh, hydrogen bomb onto the plane, you know, off of the coast of Carolina somewhere. And uh, it somehow discharged into the ocean so it's still in the ocean. They haven't found it to this day. And we're talking about a fully, you know, a live hydrogen bomb that if something detonated it, could go off. <laughs> you go, I wish you hadn't told me that. <laughs> I, especially if you lived somewhere near Carolina. I'm innocent. I'm just kind of passing on some of the information. <laughs> I think the point is uh, that we all have a responsibility every day to discharge the negativity so that if, if we're not careful, the negativity has a way of finding our firing pin. And, and loading us up so that something maybe that's just a, a slight bump would cause the explosion. I, I'm sure, and I'll, be, I'll, I'll put my hand up, we've had things where why would something like that cause me to explode? Where we know the outer thing was nothing. And yet, the inner thing. So it really tells us, well, you were walking around ready to explode. And, and so this is our work, that we're, we're doing this work to uh, discharge ourselves from the negativity that would basically put forth something that then recycles and rebounds in that form of negativity so that the, the sin stops here, like the buck, the proverbial buck, that if your fathers and mothers, and just go right back through the line, if their sins have visited upon you in the genetics that you picked up, and so you have that disease, then you have a responsibility to cure it. That's another way of saying clear it. And in this work, uh, John Rogers' work, including through peace, more than anything, we do the clearing. Um, and I'd like to say, you know, at some point you're done while you're in this world. But I'm not able to say that. <laughs> I just would like to say it. <laughs> Um, so that we're all responsible to hold up the peace, uphold the peace, and to start out in it. Maybe that's the point of what I'm reminding you about once again, is to set your course every day toward peacefulness that you would take it as a commitment, a personal commitment, and that if you in some way lose your peace or violate the peace, that you would take responsibility to put the peace back into order. May this call I'm sorry, or let me make that up to you. Um, or in some way communicate, let's let that go. 
Like, please forgive me. One of my experiences is that when God puts us into a situation where we can't change what happened as much as we would want to, and that can be very terrible, you know, what happens that we, if we could do anything to change it, we would. That, the, that God designed it that way. Just consider it's designed so you can't change what happened, so you have to change it in what you are now. You have to shift something. And often that becomes a, a never again, even if that's not possible in this world to, to work out never. Because in this world, possibility is you could shift. If you can go in this direction, you can go in that direction. So we have to have vigilance toward the peace and keep working towards it and upholding it in our own consciousness. You know, what I'm seeing right now is in the presence of the Holy Spirit as how the Christ makes itself known in this world. They're all being touched. Wherever you need to be touched. So that could be physically that you could feel something touching you. It could be in the levels of consciousness how you imagine, how you fantasize to put peace and touch what you image in, to touch into what you feel, how your emotions carry, that your emotions can be moved as a carrier wave for peace, that your mind is vigilant. So you have a peacemaker with you. A presence of peace that watches in the mind and keeps releasing whatever would come into it as an againstness. And one way to, to do that so that the againstness doesn't get in the mind is keep the mind focused on peacefulness. Like, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. We're going to work this out. You know, whatever that is that you would uphold in yourself as a presence of the peace. So thank you also for however you're contributing to this work, including, I know, financially, uh, but in the ways that you're a peacemaker in the ways that you assist and support however you do that. I know some of you are part of the peacemaker gatherings and um, all kinds of ways. The, the prayer for peace, that you participate in that regularly. Um, you know, the list that is sent out by Joan Shea and, or whoever, however that works so that there's opportunities to send light and peace into various situations. And in our way, all of us are sending peace to you, John Roger. Peace to you, our beloved friend. Again, we thank you for all you have delivered into our hands. Uh, peace to all. Beirish Pesha. Thank you so much, John. Um, can you feel the peace? Sometimes, can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the peace tonight? And hopefully online you can just feel the peace that's really 
emanating through this room. Um, so thank you again for all your contributions, your adopter horse contributions. Um, if you didn't get a chance to fill out the form, um, you can fill it out and hand it in tomorrow. We'll do the exercise again at conference workshop, at the conference workshop in the next couple of days. So you get another opportunity if you just missed out on a couple of qualities. If you are online, of course, you could just hit that adopt a horse button and you'll have everything that we had in this room. Um, it's a marvelous setup online that Julie Lurie has created for everybody just to make it so user friendly. So thank you. And because of the online, we have about almost 200 people in this room and about 150 people online. So like, you know, 350 people just participating in this event across the world, I may add. Always, uh, I mean, you know this, of course, but it still blows me away. And I'm thrilled that we can have this connection of peace going across the planet. And those of you who have attended IHOP, you know, what I like to do is just like, we get into our hearts and feel the hearts create that matrix across the planet. And in a similar way, we can just feel that peace going out in all these beautiful countries where these peacemakers are. So if you want to participate more in the Institute for Individual and World Peace, we have peacemakers, we have the peace prayer, we have peace representatives, we have peace pole plantings, we have just uh, workshops on peace. So if anything really tickles you and you've been inspired by all of this, you can visit Windermere, of course, come to a place of peace. Um, you saw Janeth up here earlier on. She's a good point of contact. You can always email me and I can put you in the right direction. One final word is that there's also peace initiatives outside of MSIA sponsored events and uh, ministers getting together in Philadelphia, for example, where there's one uh, uh, initiative, peace initiative called One Global Family. And interestingly, the Pope is visiting the East Coast in, um, in September. And I think he's going to be in D.C. for sure. And he will be in Philadelphia. So the Pope visiting Philadelphia. So the MSIA ministers and initiates there uh, have just created something called One Global Family, where the idea is to have hands across America, everyone holding hands. And that's what the initiative they're doing. So we send light to Joan Kikorian and that initiative. Is Peter Bort in the room? Peter? Yes, Peter. Can you come up here a second? And yes. Here is Peter. Um, Peter was a wonderful friend and great MSI initiate and DSS facilitator. And, um, and so, I don't know, just you can in, in 10 seconds, can you say something about this? I can tell you there's a website. It's the number one, two words, globalfamily.com. Uh, Joan Kirkian is the minister who uh, is holding the vision for this. And uh, if you talk to her, if you look at this website, uh, I, I believe you'll be inspired. Thank you. So that's Peter. So just if you want to see Peter during the workshop, just to talk about peace and that initiative. But that's just the idea that, you know, we're just moving forward with this peace. But we have so many things within our own family where we sponsor this. I hope you've been inspired tonight. I certainly have. Um, I'm all kind of revved up. I'm usually really exhausted at this time of night. But, um, but peace can be energizing, I guess, as well. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is just the beginning of conference. We'll see you here tomorrow for the workshop. We have registration, I believe, at 9 o'clock or so. And we start the workshop at 10 o'clock. If you haven't registered, there's still time to register. And um, on we go. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here.